factor theorem, which our factor theorem uh, was the fact that if um, if we get a remainder of zero, okay, then uh, this C term is a zero, okay, and then X minus it is a factor. So they're trying to get you to use that idea to see if uh, ultimately because of this fourth, X minus four is a factor of this polynomial. And if X minus negative four or X plus four is a factor of this polynomial as well. If they're factors of this polynomial, it will allow us to kind of depreciate this, the polynomial, down into um, a series of terms that we can use to find zeros, okay? Um, so what I want to do is just kind of show you how you would go about doing this. Uh, you can do this a couple different ways, uh, but I think the way that I, that I show you is where probably be the most useful. Um, you could do this in kind of, uh, let me get this thing working here. Um, Kind of iterations where you just you do the whole you know one plus four minus twenty eight minus sixty four and plus one ninety two use that in synthetic division with the four see if you get a zero if so awesome you're good to go and then you can restart the whole problem over again with negative four okay but that's I think a little bit too much and, and as we go on to today's stuff you're not going to want to do that okay so we're going to kind of show you how uh, you build up to what we learned today. Uh, so first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your your value of C that you're trying to uh, divide by in that box. We put our coefficients down to make sure you don't skip any. So we got 1, 4, negative 28, negative 64, and positive 192. Okay, so that's all my zero, or sorry, all my coefficients for this polynomial. If you skipped a power or an exponent, uh, make sure you put a zero in there um, so everything aligns correctly when you start doing your synthetic division. Um, the next thing you're doing, you're going to bring that one down. Okay, so we bring our one down. We're going to multiply. Gives us a four there. Add straight down. Gives you eight. Now multiply four and eight. Gives you 32. Add straight down, gives you 4. Then it gives you 16. Add straight down, and that gives you, what, negative 48? And 4 times 48? 192, right? Okay, it's going to be negative 192. So, because this is a 0, okay, that tells us, yes, this thing, uh, 4 is a 0. Does that make sense? Okay, because the remainder was zero. That means four is a zero. If, if four is a zero, then x minus that is a factor. Okay, so I'm going I'm to write this down. I don't know if you need to write this down right now, but the way I could rewrite uh, this polynomial at the moment would be x minus four times this stuff here, okay? Now, think about what happened here. This was an x to the fourth uh, polynomial, right? We divided essentially by an x minus four factor. So if I take x to the fourth divided by x, what are you left with? X cubed. x cubed. So this term right here is an x cubed term. So I can rewrite this as x minus four x cubed plus ax squared plus 4x minus 48. If you were to go and, and distribute the x through that stuff and distribute the negative 4 through that stuff, you would end up with x to the 4 plus 4x cubed minus 28x squared minus 64x plus 192. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay. What happens when you have your initial equation and you don't have like any, a constant value? So that's what you put in the for that when you do each other? Or is it you don't have a you don't have like 182. You don't have a 50 number. Yeah, you put zero. Yep, yep, yep. Still needs to place already. Yep, good question. Uh, so his question was: Is say this this was not there? What do you do down here in your synthetic division? You put a zero in there. Okay, you do need that placeholder. Um, Christian. Isn't negative four would be x to the fourth? Yes. Yep. Um, okay. So. 
if if this one here is a zero as well, we can we can do this one of two ways. Okay, uh, you like I said earlier, you could start the entire process over. Okay, and just kind of watch this. Maybe not do it. Um, we can start the entire process over. And like Christian said, if this was, um, a negative four there, right? Okay. So the seed the value that they're giving us here is what is going in uh, our box. So I'm gonna bring my one down, do my multiplication. It's me zero, zero, negative twenty-eight. Um, what's that? One. Is that one twelve? Twenty. Uh, so positive one twelve. Uh, sixty-four minus one twelve. What's that? Forty-eight. Okay. Now I multiply those together. Uh, it's actually positive forty-eight. Sorry. I multiply those together. It gives me negative one ninety-two again, right? And I get zero. So what that tells me is this thing could have actually factored down to x plus four because it's it's always x minus whatever's in this box, whatever your c term is. Okay. So we're saying that that negative four is a zero. So the factor that it came from was x plus four. And then I've got again this is going to be x cubed right there. Okay, so we go x cubed. I don't have an x squared because it's zero, so I'm just going to skip over it. Minus then 28x plus 48. Okay, if I were to expand both those things right there, they should give me back up to this polynomial. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, but here's the idea. If, if both of those are zeros, okay, if 4 and negative 4 are zeros, they both should divide x to the 4th plus 4x cubed minus 28x squared minus 64x plus 492 kind of at the same time. Okay, so we don't have to really do this in separate steps. And I'm, I'm going to go back to what we originally had when we did the first division. So we had that there, right? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of starting back up at the beginning, if, if this became, if that was a zero of this original polynomial, then it's got to be a zero of this because aren't they the same thing? All right. Now, I know it's not going to be a zero of x minus 4, but I do know now that it's going to be a zero of that. Does that kind of make sense, everybody? So instead of going back up to the original polynomial and starting with it, let's just start with this row right here. I'm going to start with 1, 8, 4, negative 48. What's nice about that is that will always be, I'll never have put a placeholder in there um, because we did that in the first step if there were any um, degrees left over. And then I'm going to put uh, negative 4 in that box. Okay, so this one up here was positive 4. Now we're going to try negative 4 down here. And now we go through our synthetic division, bring my 1 down, multiply, bring my 4 down, negative 16, uh, bring my negative 12 down, gives me positive 48, and there we get our zero, right? Okay. Now, what is nice about that is we just now broke this thing down here, and I got this brace around. We broke it down even further. So now we know, bring that x minus 4 down. So we didn't do anything to that, right? That, that, that was the zero from the blue stuff, okay? But now we know that x cubed plus 8x squared plus 4x minus 48 was um, divisible by a factor of x plus 4. Okay, so that, that negative 4, if that's the, the 0, then x minus it is the factor. So I'm going to get x plus 4 there. And now what does this thing here provide me? x squared, because this, this was x to the third, right? We divided by essentially x uh, minus negative 4 here. Okay, so we divide it by a first power, so doesn't that have to be x squared, x to the first, and then a constant? So x squared plus 4x minus 12. Okay, now where that becomes useful, or why this becomes useful, do you know how to factor that using old techniques? 
Is that going to go down to what, x minus 2, x plus 6? And there's our original polynomial, but it's down in to what we call a product of all of its linear factors. Each one of those terms, each one of those binomials is linear, has an exponent of 1, right? And what is nice about that, when you can get a polynomial bro broken down to all of its linear factors, you should be able to graph that pretty easily. You have a 0 at 4, a 0 at negative 4, a 0 at 2, and a 0 at negative 6, right? Okay. You know it's a fourth degree polynomial, so you know the end behavior. As x goes to positive infinity, y is going to go to positive infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, y is going to go to positive infinity. You should know y intercept is 192. Okay. Kind of ugly number to graph, I think, but uh, we know that. So we've got a lot of stuff here that's going to be pretty useful. Okay. There is it's x to the fourth, so you have a maximum of three extreme values. Okay, so you could have, uh, you know, n minus 1, so n being 4, so n minus 1 would be 3. So you could have a total of three maximums and minimums, okay? And because you have all different roots, okay, there's no double root or triple root there, you will have three uh, maximums and minimums. Does that kind of make sense? So the hope is that as we start seeing polynomials of greater degree, um, we, can, we can start factoring those. Now, what's... Um, kind of maybe problematic. If, if you wanted to check this, you had to foil that out, right? Okay. You had to foil this here. So you get x squared minus 16, right? So um, difference of per squares, right? There, those are conjugates. And then you multiply this one out, you get x squared plus 4x minus 12. Then you would have to multiply those two trinomials out. And if you did that, you would eventually get back to x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 28x squared minus 64x plus 192. Okay. Now, there are, like, I, don't, I don't know that probably shouldn't tell you this, but you probably already know. There are calculators out online that you could type this in and it will do it for you, right? It will, it will uh, expand it for you, okay? One of those is GeoGebra, okay? GeoGebra will uh, expand that for you. Um, TIA384 will not do that. It doesn't have a algebra solving system. If you look on GeoGebra, there is, let's see, if we go to view, See where it says CAS. Um, Computer Algebra Solver, I believe that's what that stands for. Um, but we, all I can do, I can type in the, the phrase expand, and we'll go, we'll type in x minus 2, x plus 6, x minus 4, and x plus 4. And I'm doing this just because I want to um, check my answer, hit enter, and it gives me back that um, polynomial that we started with. So I know I'm correct. Does that kind of make sense? So maybe that's a tool for you guys to use um, to figure out some of this stuff. Okay. Um, so that's, that's one of the questions I wanted to um, show you. Another one was... Uh, something like this, where they ask you, they're going to give you a graph, and they'll ask you, uh, come up with an equation for that graph uh, with maybe uh, like a minimal uh, degree, okay? Because there's, there's ultimately, you know, this point here, this negative 2, okay, um, that x-intercept uh, is a tangent uh, x-intercept, right? Okay, so that, that curve is tangent there. Uh, and you could, so you could, all you know, you could have an even number of uh, zeros at negative 2, right? So you could see, you could have a double root there, you could have a quadruple root, you could have 6th root, uh, you could have, or a multiplicity of 6, you have a multiplicity of 8, okay? You don't know. But you do know, when they say degree 3 up there, that's the type of polynomial that we're interested in, okay? So looking at these two things um, together, that has to be an odd multiplicity, okay? Because we pass from one half plane to the other. This one has to be an even multiplicity, right? 
And the only way that we can get degree 3 is if this one's 2 and that one's 1. Okay? We satisfy adding up to 3 and we satisfy the idea of being even here and odd there. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Um, if they said like degree 5, okay, could this one be 4 and that one be 1? Could this one be 2? And this one be three. Okay, so you see maybe the issue that they have with giving you a, that graph and saying degree five, because you know student A might look at it this way, student B might look at it this way, and in the background they have one answer. So somebody's going to be wrong, right? Okay, um, so that additional degree uh, requirement they're providing you is going to be pretty important. Um, so, you know, this is going to be even of 2. It's going to be odd of 1. So, this here is a 0. Okay, so they're trying to get you to see if C is a 0. Then X minus that is a factor. So, X minus negative 2 gives me that. That's a factor. Okay, I'm going to raise that to the second power, making it an even root, right? And then this here is another C value of 1. So x minus that c value will provide me x minus 1, okay? So there's my polynomial. Now, in general, I don't know that how this thing has been stretched vertically uh, or anything like that, okay? So there might be an a value that I need to figure out here. Does that make sense? Um, so I looked through this problem, and we've done this before. P of x is essentially a y, right? If I look at my graph, do we know for certain that that point right there is on my graph? Okay. And sometimes with these problems, they will they will provide you maybe a different one. Maybe let's say negative one, negative two. But I'm just going to use uh, zero, negative four. Okay. Because if I use x to be zero, y is negative four. So I get y to be negative four. I don't know a, but x is zero, so it gives me two there, and it gives me negative one there, right? So I get negative 4 is equal to 2 squared is 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So I get negative 4a, right? So what's that telling me a is? One. A is 1, all right? And but, you know, I can write that in there if I want to or just completely take it out and be an understood one. Um, but that's verification on how to get that um, coefficient out front. Does that make sense? Yeah, how do you destroy because the, the, the root here at negative 2, this 0, when we're tangent, uh, we know that it's even. The, the multiplicity of the root has to be even. Uh, so when we solve this, we'll get like a double root or a uh, multiplicity of 4 or multiplicity of 6. But I know it can't be 4 or 6 because uh, they specify at the beginning the degree of the, the final polynomial has to be a cubic. It has to be degree 3. So if I let that be degree four, I violate degree three. Does that kind of make sense? Um, if you if you guys want to write this way, if you you know there's there's nothing wrong. And I I'm pretty sure WebAssign would accept this. That means the same thing, right? And if you expand that out, they'll accept that when you type that in as well. It just makes a little bit more sense to type this one in because it's one, it's easier. But two, uh, that format is a lot more informative. Than the expanded format, right? Okay. Um, we'll keep doing some of this stuff. Uh, okay. uh, 